Yeah. <laughs> it was always rubberneck when we were growing up. Rubberneck, yeah. rubberneck, yeah. Yeah, we but would there's say no rubbernecking, but we wouldn't call the itself. traffic jam a rubbernecking. No, we call it a cluster F sometimes. Yeah, right. No, we we have a thing here called the Utah block where if you're on the highway and if you're in four, let's say four lanes of highway, and four cars have without even noticing it, without knowing each other, without synchronizing it, have somehow created a four car blockage, all going too slow. And nobody can get around them. There's no fast lane. They're just all four across, moving in unison. And we call that the Utah block because we never yeah. see it anymore. When never you make, a... what's the <laughs> other one? Oh, my... What do you call Sorry. it when you? Oh. What do you call it when rain falls while the sun is shining? The wolf Sunshower. is giving birth is one of the options. Wait, wolf <laughs> is giving birth? Yes. What? <laughs> what are the other options? Oh, I already moved on. Oh, uh, okay. Sun shower you... was the one I picked. Sun shower. Yeah. I don't have a term for that. It's just Sunshower. like, oh, look, the sky's weird. I would, I, would, <laughs> I would aim. I would point my face to the sky and yell, "Say it! Don't spray it!" As loud as I could. Oh, see now they don't. What do you call a sweet and carbonated beverage? Right, that's the classic one. It's the last question on this quiz. They don't have soda. Oh, have soda, cool. pop, coke, tonic, soft drink, lemonade, Coca Cola, uh, fizzy drink, and dope. Dope. I don't have sodi, which is what my grandma called it. I, well, there used to be a term for when people drank beer in a car called road sodies. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard anything besides beer be called a sodi. Well, and it um, had to be in a car, which is, you, nobody do that. It's probably because so, soda, it's just a variation of soda, right? Here's Sody where I'm and, from, yeah. apparently. <laughs> Wait, so the red is all over there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually from kind of to the right side of that dark area in southern Illinois. But we take a real man, we real a real break in Utah from all that. Look at that. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Kaboom. So I guess we're not as similar as I thought, Scott. Not at all. Not at all. All right. Y'all ready to talk laptops? Yeah. Yeah. Ew. I like laptops. Yeah. They're for your lap. Oh, uh, the control. control. I'm ready. Here you go, Roger. Let's see, move this window down. Move this window here. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The Daily Tech News Show is powered by its listeners, not outside organizations. If you get value from the show, consider giving a little back. As little as a dollar a month keeps great tech news and analysis coming your way commercial free. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, November 29th, 2017 from DTNet's headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline at the Beach, I'm Sarah Lane. From the windswept peaks of the Mount Baldy, I'm Scott Johnson. You know, I, I saw this in the rundown, and I thought you had written the weird swept peaks. <laughs> well, depends on when you ask me, Tom. The weird? Is, uh, I just imagine some weird guy sweeping up there. Uh, yes, hey, what's up, uh, everybody? Uh, Roger Chang is here as well. He doesn't do any weird sweeping, do you, Roger? No, I only sweep up the lawn clippings. <laughs> <laughs> it's I not think weird at all. That's what truth sounds like, folks. It is. It's very dull. <laughs> Let's start with a few tech things you should know. All right, I'm going to try to summarize all of AWS reInvent for you. Here goes. Amazon announced Amazon Neptune, an Aurora serverless offering for more efficient computing and new backup feature for DynamoDB. Amazon also announced AWS support for Kubernetes on top of its Elastic Container Service, AWS Fargate, to let customers run containers without managing infrastructure, AWS EC2 bare metal instances in public preview, which gives customers direct access to the hardware bare metal, Amazon Free RTOS, a microcontroller operating system meant to run on low power connected devices, Internet of Things devices that can connect to the cloud. Amazon Transcribe that turns any audio file uh, or audio 
from a video file stored on S3 into English or Spanish text, Amazon Translate, which provides text translations for supported languages, and AWS DeepLens, a camera meant for developers that uses AI to take better photos. That's available for pre-order today for $249. Okay, wow. good, Tom. Good summary. Thank you. Lots of, go lots of, <laughs> lot of stuff there. In an ongoing patent war that looks to have no end in sight, really, Apple filed a countersuit against Qualcomm in a U.S. district court in San Diego Wednesday, today, alleging that Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 and 820 processors infringe on at least eight of Apple's patents. Now, back in July, Qualcomm accused Apple of infringing several of its patents around battery life, which Apple denies, stating Qualcomm's patents were, in fact, invalid. Ooh. Mm. Big fight happening there. Uh, Essential, you know, the Essential phone, Tom has one, mm -hmm. says that it uh, had a regular board meeting. And when that happened earlier this month, Andy Rubin asked to take a leave of absence as CEO of Essential in order to deal with personal matters. Uh, Andy Rubin, of course, being, you know, chief dude who brought us the Essential phone. Uh, Wednesday, the information published a report that cites sources who say Rubin left Google in 2014 after an internal investigation found he had engaged in an inappropriate relationship with a subordinate, which violates Google's policy. A spokeswoman for Rubin told the, uh, told the information, that is the publication, that uh, the relationship was consensual. A spec for HDMI 2.1 has been finalized, supporting data transfer speeds up to 48 gigabits per second and even faster if you use something called display stream compression. All of that means you can do uncompressed 4K video at 120 frames per second with HDR up to 12 bits per channel. It's not going to show up in products yet. It's got to go through nine months of compliance tests first, then it can start showing up in products. Now, here are some more top stories. Take it away, Sarah. Okay, Snapchat is really not a new design and will separate social snaps from publisher content on two different screens now. So you swipe left or swipe right, depending on what you want to look at. It'll also switch to an algorithmic sorting of snaps to sort by what it deems your favorite people, the, the, the content you like the best, not just the content that gets posted the most often. Snapchat will continue to show ads between stories and discover content, no surprise there. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I feel like so, yeah, this, always, apparently it's going to roll out to a small set of users starting Friday. So it's not something that I could check out yet. But I and I you know, I use Snapchat on a daily basis. I don't always make snaps, but I, I do look at my feed and sure. I do find the discover area annoying to be all in the same place because it's. Well, quite honestly, I don't really have any Discover content that I'm particularly interested in. So it's like, oh, snaps for my friends. And at the bottom, it's like, look at what Kylie Jenner wore to the club. Uh, so I, I, I like the idea of these being separated. I also think that for publishers, it's kind of a bum deal for them because I'm just never going to swipe on that page. Sure. Well, from a, uh, from a bigger picture, pull out the camera a little bit on Snap these days. They've taken a lot of heat over the last year or two regarding their public price since going public. I guess it's only been about a year, but things haven't gone great or the way that they wanted it to. And some have suggested that maybe that's because uh, their stuff is hard to figure out. It's hard to navigate. It's tricky to get uh, to get through and use for most people uh, or for more people that maybe could or should be using the service. Do you think that as a daily Snap user, do you think that this is maybe the beginning of what could ultimately be uh, a long-term plan to overhaul the interface? Well, I mean, I think Snap has had, you know, so much of its market share taken away, uh, taken from it by Instagram stories, which I really couldn't have predicted how popular Instagram stories would be. But so many of my friends were like, oh, I'm on Instagram anyway. I just don't even want to open Snapchat. Everything's all here. So that was a bit of a surprise to me. But, you know, Snap, Snap, Snapchat has always been accused of you know having this interface that at first was for younger people because it was kind of confusing and after it became more of like a oh this isn't just you know something for young people to send racy photos back and forth to each other it's you know it's, it's actually a, you know communication medium you know all that stuff just started it started to make less sense and for a while um i've felt that the interface even though i know how it works i know how to get where i need to go i've trained myself over time but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and it's certainly not going to bring in a lot of new users uh, because it has continued to not make sense. And yeah, I think that this design 
uh, overhaul was a long time coming. Yeah. And, if, you know, they, it, I, I don't think they would have felt pressure to change if they hadn't had some, like, extremely bad quarters this year, but they did. My question is, if I follow DJ Khaled or Grace Helbig, which I do, do they stay on the right with the Discover people? Because they're not my friends. They're not on my contacts list. I mean, I would like to consider them my friends. Well, I don't you've think added them, though. So they so are. They're, do they go to the left or they go to the right? They go to the left. Because the left because is my contact. To Those are people them. like, I know the phone number of these people. No, this is more of like the BuzzFeed account will yeah. now not be showing All up right. at the bottom of, you, then, you yeah, know. I'm just never going to go over there to the Discover site. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that I will either. Also, I don't think it's all that obvious or it doesn't sound obvious that you're supposed to be swiping back and forth. I assume the first time I log in after the update, it'll say, oh, by the way, you know, flick this direction if you want to do this thing. But I think that people are going to see that a whole lot less is my guess. Uh, we shall see. Waze, however, has updated its Android and iOS apps. So I do this with a apology as I say it, including more accurate directions or uh, for motorcycle riders and hands free okay ways if i say that will it make people's phones do things i don't, I don't know unless they're might. using ways i guess if ways is open uh, something just happened for you people at home anyway uh that voice command prompts uh for users in the us uk and canada ways also will include carpool lanes in its routing system in 22 states plus toronto vancouver and montreal uh, with more cities and uh in the us and canada on the way uh, I always love wonder this, love this, love this. I am still a Waze user. I know many people are not. I definitely see the advantages of Google Maps now. Uh, the more that I've I've been using it or been close to someone using it, because uh, Eileen's kind of switched over. But one of the big problems when I use Waze is I want to report slow traffic or an obstruction or say, oh yeah, the the policeman's not there anymore. And, but I don't want to reach over and touch the phone, even just to do the the three swipe. So being able to just talk to it, I think is great. I also, you know, I don't ride a motorcycle, but this, uh, the update for motorcyclists, which includes you know, like narrow roads, right? Where it's like, if you're on a motorcycle, it's totally different than if you're in a car, if, the, if you're actually trying to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. That's just not something that I would have thought of, but... Darren Kitchen, he loves motorcycles. Like I'm sure this is something where he's like, yes, this would be extremely helpful. They're, you know, they're they're two different, uh, completely two different size vehicles, and uh, you know, if there's a uh, if there's a backup on the freeway, well, it might not impact a motorcyclist as much as a car. Yeah, if you're in a state that allows lane splitting, you're just going to zoom right through that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 24 hours after a security researcher made a public bug in macOS High Sierra that allowed root access to anyone public. Uh, we talked about this because it happened right before the show yesterday. Apple not only issued a patch, which you should install right away if uh, you are running High Sierra, but also issued an apology. This is so rare, although it's less rare than it used to be. I'm going to read the whole thing. Apple wrote, security is a top priority for every Apple product, and regrettably, we stumbled with this release of macOS. When our security engineers became aware of the issue Tuesday afternoon, we immediately began working on an update that closes the security hole. This morning, as of 8 a.m., the update is available for download, and starting later today, it will be automatically installed on all systems running the latest version, 10.13.1, of macOS High Sierra. We greatly regret this error, and we apologize to all Mac users, both for releasing with this vulnerability and for the concern it has caused. Our customers deserve better. We are auditing our development processes to to help prevent this from happening again. Jeez. Woo. That, is, that is unusual Apple talk. Uh, not speaking of the old Apple talk cable interface, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't hear that kind of thing from those guys very often. And you know what? They're totally right. This is super refreshing because that was a big glaring, weird security bug that should not have shipped with that product. And because of that, I wanted something like this, and they gave it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm dutifully impressed by what uh, what they've said here. It's weird for Apple. I like how they managed to, you know, sincerely apologize and also brag that they patched it so quickly. <laughs> 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 All right, this is kind of 
kind of freak out some people, maybe not all of you. Facebook now has a feature to curb suspicious activity on some of its accounts by using a face photo captcha to verify if a user is in fact the person that they say they are before unlocking access to the account. Some users have said they've actually been locked out and been forced to upload a photo to Facebook in order to get back in. The prompt some users have seen says, please upload a photo of yourself that clearly shows your face. We'll check it and then permanently delete it from our servers. A Facebook spokesperson tells Wired, the photo test is just one of several methods, both uh, automated and manual, used to detect suspicious activity at various points of interaction on the site, like creating an account, sending friend requests, setting up ads payments, and creating or editing ads themselves. Mm -hmm. So if I get this right from, from what Facebook has told Wired and, and what, what uh, Wired is saying in their article here, it sounds like Facebook is trying to say when we see suspicious activity means you were logging in from Hillsboro, Illinois, Hillsboro, Illinois, Hillsboro, Illinois, St. Petersburg, Russia. They're going to go, hold on. That's you, you didn't get to Russia that fast. Give me your face. Uh, and so this is all going to hinge on how often it happens. The fact that people are going, hey, wait a minute, this is weird, probably means they were using a VPN, right? Maybe they were using a VPN that put them in the UK, turned off the VPN, and they're back in Utah. And it goes, oh, hold on, that's weird. I've, I've tripped it that way before by even just using a VPN that's in San Jose and then logging in back in Los Angeles. I've, I've tripped these kinds of things at other sites. So I could see this happening to people because of that. But I get what they're doing, which is when we think someone's hijacking your account, we're going to use facial recognition to do this. And the system is very similar to the revenge porn system, yeah. which is give us a picture, we'll match it, and then we'll delete it. So you kind of have to trust that they're going to do that. This is quite a bit less sensitive since it's just a picture of you right at the moment. Well, yeah. and there's probably a lot of uh, opportunity for false positives, right? Because there is an issue with Facebook of fake accounts being made. Like if somebody steals my photo and just says that that's their profile photo, you know, what am I going to do about it? I probably don't even know. But if Facebook can detect, well, hold on a second. These are two different accounts, two different people. That's the same photo. You know, it, the system is, is, is likely to maybe boot a few people out who are completely legitimate users because they just had a photo that looked like another one that's in the system. Yeah. And you can't use a photo that Facebook already knows about to try to fool it. If Facebook's like, no, that photo was already here. Yeah, it has right. to be a photo of you at that moment, or at least a photo Holding it's never seen Holding today's newspaper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Hold up your iPad with today's newspaper on it. Proof of life or you don't get back into Facebook. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think this all, whether this ends up being a horrible thing or not, kind of hinges on how often they use it. Right, right. Well, Microsoft is planning a big overhaul of its 500-acre HQ in Redmond, Washington. The company will demolish 12 buildings and build 18 more with the emphasis on more open offices. The construction <laughs> What? Sorry, open office oh. is the <laughs> open source alternative to Microsoft Office. Get it? Uh, that's Sorry. a good one. I'm glad we didn't finish. We'll be here all week. Yeah, well done. Uh, the <laughs> construction will add around 2.5 million square feet to its existing 15 million it has on the campus, which will accommodate an additional 8,000 employees. The project will take five to seven years uh, to complete. And I don't suppose it's going to be round or anything, right? They're not aiming for like Apple-like changes. Probably not. I don't know. I mean, uh, of the aerial view of the Redmond headquarters as it stands now, there's nothing... Nothing cylindrical about it. Uh, but I yeah, mean, I mean, Scott, it's, good it's, work uh, taking a Microsoft story and making it about Apple. Though. <laughs> I, was, I was aiming for that, and I'm glad that you noticed. That was my goal, actually, this time. For once, I did it on purpose. <laughs> well, Open Office got a mention, too. So we really, <laughs> And uh, for the five to seven of you out office. there, LibreOffice. I know, it just didn't fit the joke, okay? <laughs> it's kind of interesting because... There's, you know, so much talk about well, where, where's Amazon's next big headquarters going to be? You know, it's, it's, you know, Amazon's in Seattle, but it's looking to expand elsewhere. Redmond, uh, for anybody who isn't familiar, is a suburb of Seattle. So it's near, but it's, it's a suburb. It's kind of like Silicon Valley to San Francisco. And, uh, you know, as nice as a campus might be, that's Microsoft really doubling down on the fact that they want people to be at that Redmond campus. And, you know, it 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 
makes it difficult if somebody just doesn't want to live in Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it appears they're not moving is what I would and my big right. no, and they've got offices in Silicon Valley, they've got offices in Vancouver. Sure. They've got, yeah, they've got offices sure. all over. This is this is just oh, them sure. doubling down on on headquarters on, sure. on the mothership. Home base. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. You can get it as a podcast. You can get it on your Amazon Echo as a flash briefing. You can get it in your Google Home, and you can get it on the Anchor app. Uh, get it however you want, but do get it at DailyTechHeadlines.com. And that's a look at our top stories. So a New York Times article uh, from about a week ago by Susan Donarski uh, has been making the rounds and getting a lot of attention on our subreddit. So we wanted to talk about some of the findings that she summarized. Uh, she teaches and she has noticed that students with laptops maybe don't do as well as students who take notes with pen and paper. So she talked about three studies in this column. Uh, one showed uh, research from Princeton University and UCLA that laptops during lectures decreased learning. They asked a group of students to take notes at a lecture with pen and paper, while another group used laptops, and the laptop users showed less comprehension of what was taught in the lectures. Now, the theory there in this paper is that when you transcribe with pen and paper, you have to think about what's being said and then interpret it as you write it. Whereas if you're typing on a laptop, you can just transcribe. So you can just kind of take what you hear and turn it into exactly what the teacher is saying, and you don't spend any time interpreting it. Uh, a couple other studies, researchers at York University and McMaster University had students look up unrelated items like movie times during a lecture to test distraction. Uh, not surprisingly, those who were asked to do the distractions uh, remembered less of the lecture, but what they didn't expect, uh, or what they weren't sure they would find, was that those sitting near them were adversely affected too. So if the person next to them was looking up movie times, it distracted the person next to them. It was an, uh, an ancillary effect. And then the United States Military Academy decided to test student achievements in an economics class over the entire course. Sure, maybe one lecture causes a problem, but maybe the benefits of the laptop over the entire course would outweigh those. Not according to this study. Uh, electronics were allowed for some classes. Electronics were banned entirely for other classes. And then they had a third test where they were allowed to have tablets in the classroom, but they had to be laid flat on the desk so that the teacher could see what people were doing with them. Uh, and students without access to devices at all, the students in the banned electronics classes performed better than those other two groups. So Scott, I know you've got a couple of, uh, of kids in college right now. Does this seem to bear out with their experience? Yeah, um, but we didn't know why. Like. I have a theory about this and um, I talked to my daughter about this a little bit uh, today uh, over the phone. So I said, we're going to have this topic today. We're going to discuss this stuff and I'm curious what your experience has been. And she believes that part of the reason she performs better in class by taking handwritten notes and albeit some of those handwritten notes are on an iPad pro because she's taking notes in a digital art class where that thing's sort of got a dual use to it. And so sometimes she's painting on it, sometimes she's doing notes or whatever. But she was hand taking notes there um, and doing it on paper and other other methods. And she thinks, and I think I might agree with this, and the study doesn't actually mention this, but I think part of it is uh, not only are you having to sort of translate that information that the, that the professor or the teacher is telling you and then get that on paper in a way that you can understand it, that is an important part of the process, but also... How many times is that the last stage? If you're writing on paper, you're not done usually. Usually what that means is later you're collecting those notes, you're reading over them, you're scratching out stuff that didn't make sense, uh, you're circling something that was important, and oftentimes you're then retranscribing those to some sort of uh, digital document or a, uh, through a notebook or a computer. And so you're having to once again go through the information in an analytical way. And we sort of had this conversation that we think that that's why she seems to get better personal results when she writes them down versus typing them down. It's just a way of forcing you to have to live through the information a couple of times before you commit it to anything. And when I think I that's, oh, that's sorry. Probably, go ahead, Scott. Oh, go ahead. When I was in college, we nobody really had laptops. Uh, that's just the way it was back in the olden days. But I have, you know, throughout my adulthood always felt that, if I really needed to like 
have a to-do list, you know, that I, I needed to make sense and really need to make sure that I got a bunch of stuff done. I needed to write it out, but I never really understood why it was like, I don't know, it's just the way that you, you know, I'll put a pencil to the paper and make a letter or cursive or whatever. But the study, one of these studies anyway, did shine a little light on this. And it was uh, the point that students with laptops tended to just transcribe what they were hearing. And then the students who were actually writing stuff out were like summarizing and parsing more. And that I was like, oh yeah, because I can type way faster than I can write. You know, I'm a very fast typer. So it's like, sure, you just kind of, you're just kind of like you're typing what you're hearing, right? And you figure like, yeah, I'll look at that later. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you have to sort of think about it, like, okay, the teacher just said this sentence. What are the actually most important words in that sentence that I need to write down so that I have the, the, the crux of the information? Yeah, it's like you're going through two cycles of comprehension on site at that in real time. So... Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. But at face value, I don't think a lot of people think, oh, typing is going to lead me to retain less information than writing. But it sounds like that is very much the case. Yeah. There's also, I think anyway, a feeling of like, if I'm not typing it, then why did I buy this thing? You know what I mean? Like there's going to be a desire on the student's part, forgetting about distractions of other sorts. Like if you've got WhatsApp up and you're looking at Facebook at the same time and trying to keep notes, if, if we're if we're just like in a vacuum here and the only app you have up is one that is taking notes for you, if, if this study suggests and people are being told that your $600 to $1,200 investment isn't benefiting you in a classroom situation in the way that you thought you were, that's hard for people to hear. You know, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear that that thing's awesome and that it's doing better for them and that they're, you know, advancing quicker because they've got their finger on technology when really our brains and our particular uh, state of human evolution might just be that we're better at when we when we put this stuff down with our hands and have to look at it and then have to share it and move it around. And it's a very tactile experience. And, and it well, may your just daughter's talk. your daughter's experience, Scott. Uh, made me think the problem isn't the devices, the problem is how we use them. And that's usually the case with new tools, which is we have to get learn how to use them. Maybe it's you should have to write things rather than type them. Uh, although that West Point, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Military Academy uh, economics class, that one, that one seems to indicate that maybe the tablets weren't helpful, but maybe people were typing instead of writing. The point is you need to think, interpret, and summarize for it to sink in better rather than transcribe. And so there may be a way to use a laptop if you're just like, I'm going to think, interpret, and summarize, and then type. You just have to learn a new skill. It's like, don't just type everything the teacher's saying. Sure. I, I think there's probably, there's probably room for another device in this in this world. And they exist. You can go buy these now. Amazon's got various kinds. I've seen Kickstarters for them. They're, but they're basically dedicated writing tablets, sometimes drawing, but mostly writing. And their e-ink uh, typically is the technology being used low uh, latency, blah, blah, blah. And these things are a couple hundred bucks or whatever. If those could come down in price, imagine a $50 tablet whose job it is to do nothing else but take notes. That's it. That's its I, whole job is to write stuff down. I, and that thing's cloud connected and maybe it's OCRing to your notebook or maybe it's all these other cool connected features. But at the moment when the teacher's telling you the stuff and you've got to figure out, you know, the the why this part of the body is called whatever in your biology class, you can do it in the old way with all the new hooks and maybe let me ask you a question any of you ever used like uh, tape recorders or like a recording like an audio i was recorder thinking about that same thing because i that's what i used to do i used to have one and this is the other thing to kind of uh um, i don't want to take up too much time to kind of uh, uh go on what um sarah was saying you do write a lot slower and a consequence of that is i would often stop the lecture or not I would ask the professor of the lectures like, oh, can you repeat that? Or I would ask for clarification. So I wasn't just mindlessly writing. I'm like, okay, what exactly are you trying to say? Let me ask you a question to get clarity. And then I can write it down in a way that makes sense, which you might not do yeah. if you are just simply transcribing. If you record it, you usually listen to it later and take notes out of it, right? Or yes. you review. Whereas if you're just transcribing on your laptop, you feel like, oh, okay, I got it all down. You know, yeah. and you just didn't do as much work. Or you're just copying and pasting. You're just moving it from one paragraph to the other, not really yeah, thinking yeah. about it. Like what we're missing is that middle study part, I think. And here's the other worry. So if 
if college campuses and classes are used to notebooks being the norm in class or these kinds of devices and it's not working great the way it is, it's also going to be a bit of a retrain for these professors and teachers to slow down a little because unless you're super good at shorthand writing, that's different than typing. People can type quicker than they can write. I know I can. So, you know, it just changes the dynamic in there. It's very interesting, though, because it's something you just think, oh, computers. Here we are, everybody. Computers. Welcome to the computer time. But maybe we... Computers ruining the minds of kids. <laughs> I knew yeah. it. You just got to get good at it. You got to not You got to fall for the trap. There's new temptations. The old temptation was to fall asleep. Now it's new. Uh, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and at facebook.com slash group slash dailytechnewsshow. This was a great example of something kicking around on our Reddit uh, that we like. Hmm, yeah, that's a really interesting kind of evergreen topic. We want to talk about that. Let's check what's in the mailbag, Sarah. We got an uh, email from William Madison who says, there's been a bit of praise for the new version of Mozilla Firefox 57. Well, I updated to the current version, but then after I installed it, Firefox notified me that my screen reader JAWS 18 by Freedom Scientific was not supported and I'd need to install the extended access version that would just revert me back to Firefox 52. It's disappointing since Firefox or IE are the preferred recommended browsers to use with JAWS and yes, I'm running the current version. Just wanted to put this developer service announcement to the community to encourage developers to consider the consequences of the code that they're writing. Think outside of your standard use case. Universal design and thoughtful consideration will enable you to be effective in your development and your design. Yeah, uh, both ways. Uh, you know, if you're still supporting Firefox and IE JAWS, uh, you might need to add some support for newer things, but then the newer things need to understand the, that that they need to have forward support uh, for for the older stuff, the especially accessibility stuff. Thank you, William. Uh, and real quickly, uh, Paul Boyer wrote in and said, you guys mentioned the new sets thing from Microsoft. I ironically, uh, our software arm where I work just released something similar, better in his opinion. He works there. You might want to check it out yourself. He works for Stardock but in the games division. And he says, all I did on this was icon. So full disclosure and all, but I've been surprised how useful it turns out to be. So if you're like, I don't know about that sets thing being built into windows, maybe I want an alternative. Check out Stardock. Stardock's been around forever and they do great stuff. Uh, and they've got their own little tabs in, in apps situation uh, that you can try out at stardock.com. Thank you, Paul, a.k.a. Mormagill. And thank you, Scott Johnson, for joining us. Uh, what you got going on these days? Oh, you know, same old, same old, just trying to work through these th these here holidays, but uh, lots of busy, cool stuff going on. If you want to follow my misadventures in the world of content creation, follow me at uh, Scott Johnson on Twitter, and you can find the website with everything linked therein at frogpants.com. Folks, if you need help, our Patreon Slack is buzzing with other listeners like you that are happy to help a patron out. Uh, just in the past day, I noticed we had patrons who asked for help with cloud storage in a restricted work environment and recommendations for a cloud-based VoIP system. And I loved seeing everybody jumping in and giving each other advice. So if you want to join in and help or be helped or both, just back the DTNS Patreon at the $20 a month level. That's the analyst level. And you'll get invited into the DTNS Bosses Slack. And I'm, I'm mentioning that today because invites will go out on the first of the month, every month. And if you back us now, you'll get that invite in two days on the 1st of December. So head on over to patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC. And if you want to watch live, alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv are your URLs. Our website, of course, is dailytechnewsshow.com. Roundtable episode tomorrow featuring Justin Robert Young, Rich Straffolino, and Bart Bouchotts. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> ah, love the show. Good show. Good, Good show. Good show. Show, show, show. Show I, bot. You know, I think I'm going to keep doing this show. <laughs> yeah, well, don't get yeah. <laughs> sleep on it. All right. You're probably right. I shouldn't rush into anything. Yeah, let the high let the high come down a little. Uh, right. Don't be too rash about it though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Impulse decisions. 
Yeah, rarely. Never, rarely. You're right. You're right. Let's all think about it. But it's a really good show. I just want to. really good. Thank you. Um, for... It's kind of funny because I remember taking one of those uh, Section Three courses, and I had uh, one of my classes. That's a Section Three course. At, at state, you basically have like three sections. One is your major, for what the second one is. Third was like you had to, these were basically required courses that were not directly related to your major. So they wanted like, you to be well rounded. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And so it so, was stuff you had to take. A lot of people took sexual, human sexuality. I did. Um, I, but I it had was a very, course. Very popular. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember taking a course, and one of my classmates was deaf, and she had a stenographer. They came in to take her notes, and all I did is like, "Hey, can I borrow your notes?" <laughs> because it was the best because she typed everything word for word, and then I got to but play. But then with you the had to keyboard. read them and process them because you were reading them. No, I just sat there, paid attention, asked a bunch of questions, and then looked back on the notes. Oh, and great. then you just had better notes than the ones. Yeah, there. just have a class stenographer. I mean, really, I think that would be awesome. I wonder if State still has that class. You know, a lot of, I, I know, I think Dave, the psychologist, uh, still does this, uh, re records his lectures and, and makes them available to his students as podcasts so they can go back and review them. I remember taking the telecourse. Remember, remember those? You would have to go in each week and take the VHS tape out of the library and watch it. I mean, taking notes isn't about getting the information down. That's why you, a stenographer is just, it's a different thing. Taking notes is about making sure to tell yourself later, these are the important things you learned to remind you of that. And that's why the temptation on a laptop to just transcribe probably isn't having as good of an effect, right? Because you're, you're, you're just, you're, you're becoming the stenographer instead of actually listening and understanding and going, okay, the thing I need to remember are these three points. I would say and turn the webcam around. Ill and yeah. active course. And my my point was that you can do that on a laptop. It just takes a little more discipline, not to suddenly like, oh, I can I can transcribe, so I'm gonna. You know, I was thinking about this because you know, like I said before, I didn't have an option to have a laptop in college, but um, but I also took a lot of math because I started out as a math major. Mm -hmm. And so my first couple of years, it's a, you know, and when you're doing like equations, like everyone's got their own way of doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like typing. It is not, you don't, that's not really the way it works. And I guess, you know, with tablets, particularly bigger tablets, that would be the way to go, you know, cause you could still write all that stuff out. But, um, that, you know, it, it also depends. It's like, what kind of notes are we taking here? You know? What 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 kind of characters do we need to jot down, whether it's yeah. typing or written or whatever? Huh. Well, the um, uh, a lot of a lot of software has shortcuts for equations that make it easy. Uh, oh, see, that would have just killed. That would ru yeah. have ruined me because I mean that was you know writing out numbers and you know stuff where you gotta you know prove it and. Oh. Just, it, like there was a sort of a certain way that it kind of had to look, you know, it was sort of scaled down the page at a certain pace. I, I just cannot imagine retaining any of that information if I had little shortcuts. I mean, yes, there were calculators and that sort of thing, but I don't know. It just, it's, it's also just, I just remember college one way, you know, I can't really imagine doing it any differently than the way that we all did it. So uh titles facebook literally wants your face that's what i'm going with i was yeah. i was actually running through because you guys are having such a good that's uh, a good one facebook wants your face like well that. cryptocurrency did not have a good day everyone oh yeah where'd bitcoin end up i know it was above 11k at one point ethereum was down at 402 last i checked yeah, let's see ethereum oh, fancy ethereum. fancy people have invested in ethereum i'm just a Plain old Bitcoin guy. So you know it's not that low. Yeah. Oh, I I love all the all the all the weird ones. Wait, what's what was uh, Bitcoin again? I didn't hear you. Ninety eight and some change. Ninety eight. Oh, it went below ten. Did. So it went up above eleven and then went below ten. Mm, interesting. Well. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about what I think will happen to Bitcoin 
next year. <laughs> we'll have our prediction show on December 29th. Yeah, you should start putting some thought into what yeah. your prediction might be. I wonder, be. Hmm. hmm, I'll hmm. have to mull that over over the next 30 days. With some mulled wine. Oh, uh, mulled wine. Yeah. It's mulled wine season. Here's the problem. Mulled uh -oh. wine <laughs> is so nice if you're, you know, it's snowing outside and you're somewhere mm -hmm. cold. In L.A., you don't want to drink that. You don't want mold wine. You're gonna sweat. Yeah, it occasionally gets cold. For gets first cold. Uh, December, I was down. I mean, here. it gets cold enough to drink tea. It's not in yeah. hot on that, but just drink I just it, in the it got evening. down in the 30s the first December I was here. Did it really? Yeah, yeah and people were I mean, freaking was, out. They're like, it was definitely cold last winter. There were definite because I have like the heating in my apartment is not great. Usually, it's never an issue, but there were definitely a few nights where I'm like, need another blanket. It's cold in here. But 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 like being in, you know, Paris drinking mold wine. Oh yeah. Everybody's, you know, wrapped up and freezing is just the best. Well, Paris is great because it never gets that cold. Right? Oh, it's never stop. gonna go it's never gonna go like below zero Fahrenheit in Paris. It gets, but it's gonna get true. cold I've enough that you're gonna be like, ooh, it's it's uncomfortable outside without a coat for sure. It, it I've I, been there where it's like like you were there when it outside. snowed, which I think is miserable. rare, isn't it? What's that? I remember you talking about it snowing in Paris when you were there one time. Yeah, the last time I was there in the winter, and this was a few years ago, but it was, um, and I was in an Airbnb that did not have good heat either, and so it was just like basically like sleeping outside. Right. I'm doing, I'm do and I I'm was doing just miserable for a week. We're, we're, we're never we're warmed up. Relativism is killing my point because people are like, "What do you talk?" Beatmaster's like, "It gets very cold." I'm not saying it doesn't get cold. I'm saying there's a floor to it right it's Men not the coldest place in europe that's for yeah. sure but i've been there where i'm like i can't be outside my face hurts this sucks and then you go have mold wine and your you nose hairs out. don't freeze in paris would be my assertion yeah. the what doesn't your nose hairs well fountains did the last time I was yeah there. but that's that's just freezing nose hairs freezing is like oh again, that's, a, that's a different kind of free i don't i don't want to think about that that's, that's, yeah uh, <laughs> Nose they have nose plugs for that. There, there is, I've told this story before, so I apologize if you've heard it. Uh, but there was a point when I was walking home from Murphy's Pub in Champaign, Illinois, across the quad with the wind sweeping across the plains and my nose hairs freezing because it was below zero Fahrenheit. And I said, I will never live in a cold place again after I leave college. And I went to Texas and then California. My only wintry Christmas has been in New Jersey, in New York, with the snow and the cold. And like, oh my God, please let me get inside a building where there's heat and a fireplace. Scott, you're just laughing at all of us, aren't you? Sorry, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I would never laugh at you guys. He was like, he snickers. He snickers. It's not really a laugh. <laughs> chuckle. Well, my wife's I, chuckle. I really do. Like, I, I don't know. The cold weather is just. I got to go somewhere else to experience it. I mean, even in San Francisco where it gets colder than LA is like not cold, but, um, but there is something really nice about having a bundle up, you know, put on a cool, out you know, too it's, long. It's, it's cool for like a short while, but yeah. man, you just yeah. like, no, I know God. Yeah, spending a winter, you know, being cold all the time. I know that's like not fun for most people, but I, it just is, it's very, it's like, it's like a special fun, like, oh, I get to take my wool coat out and, you know. Mm -hmm. No, there's something, there's something fun about it when it doesn't <laughs> last, right? There's something nice oh, about being inside either. with yeah. a warm drink. There's something like, oh, I'm going to run out in the cold and then get in the car and then go to a warm place. It's when you have to actually be out in the cold. That's when it. Cold and snow is something you should visit willingly and mm -hmm. not have visited on you unwillingly. Well said. I was actually talking to uh, the guy at the UPS store yesterday about he lived in Idaho for a year. He's like, and he was working, you know, just trying to find jobs and stuff. And just how cold it was when you're outside working in the middle of the winter in Idaho. I mean, when you're bundled up, it just cuts through you. 
I just remember, I remember shoveling snow one winter and I had these St. Louis Cardinals football gloves that were knit and I loved them, right? Cause they had the St. Louis Cardinals logo here and they, you know, and they were cool looking. And my dad's like, are you sure you want to shovel snow with those? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm shoveling with the St. Louis Cardinals gloves. It's going to be great. And of course they just got soaked. Right. So I had them like go inside, put my hands by the heater to heat them up. Then I go back outside and then shoveling. And of course they turned to ice <laughs> because I melted the snow on them and made them in little ice mittens. Uh, it was the worst. I'm surprised I didn't get frostbite. Um, somebody have. told me once because I had like gone out and it was, I don't know where I was, somewhere where it's freezing cold outside. My hair was kind of still wet. And so it had gotten like crunchy and they were like, oh, it'll just, you know, if you hit it the wrong way, it'll just break right off, which <laughs> not true, but I believed them. And mm -hmm. I thought that I was giving myself a haircut. <laughs> Love that. Snow humor. Ha ha ha. The best. That's no joke. Oh. Bested once again by the merit <laughs> pun. Yep. Is best the word you were looking for? <laughs> <Better job. laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I guess I, to be bested, I had to try also. <laughs> and it had to be good. And <laughs> hmm. I mean, I think if you're the only one who throws out a pun, you bested the rest. At punning, perhaps. <laughs> uh, Facebook wants your face. I'm still so curious as to what happened with that file today. Oh, yeah, the Daily Tech Headlines file. So what Sarah's referring to is uh, Daily Tech Headlines uploaded as usual. Nothing changed. Same Sarah Lane file you got last week, and for some reason it wouldn't show up in Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts, and we have no idea why. So and I wouldn't I, have known except a couple people in our in our DTNS Slack were like, yeah. "What happened?" Like I saw it on the Anchor app, but I didn't see it, you know, where I usually do. And so of course well, I an thought, Anchor's like, a different ah, I've forgotten something. Yeah, Anchor's a different recording, so that right. makes sense. But yeah. it worked on Amazon Echo Flash Briefing. It worked on Downcast, like. Why did it work there and not? So the solution was switch the link from SoundCloud to archive.org, which doesn't make any sense either. It doesn't. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's, you know, Cause it's still the same file. And that's, and Tom is sort of like, well, you know, I wonder if like, you know, is, is something in your settings? And it's like, well, the weird thing about that is what I do is I open the same audio file in logic week after week. I delete my vocal track and then I just lay down a new track. Cause you know, so the music and stuff is in the same place. Uh, you know, and then I just move around a little bit yeah, and yeah. then I, I bounce to MP3 and I never, I never fuss with anything in those settings. So it's like, I don't know. This is the There's a ghost thing. in my machine. It was Sting's fault. Oh, but the whole time. I just don't, because I know people, uh, particularly, you, you know, uh, folks who are not on the West coast, you know, it's like you want your headlines as quickly as possible. So I just hate someone to be like, yeah, Hey, yeah. I've been looking around. Where is it? Where I'm like, ah, I rushed it this morning for you. So when, when you told, when you alerted me about it, I was like, Oh, it's probably just a simple, like check mark didn't get checked or something. So I go right. and look, everything in the blog post is perfect. I'm like, okay, well, it wasn't that. So I'm like, well, what, maybe there's something weird in the settings. Cause we hadn't talked through the fact that you're like, no, I haven't changed a thing. So I look at the refresh, the Hertz rate and the VIT rate. And like, some of these are slightly different from what I do, but they're not wrong. They, they should play and they've played before. So it's not that. Um, and then the last thing I did was like, okay, well maybe, Maybe there's something with SoundCloud and the SoundCloud link just isn't playing nice. So that's why I switched to archive because I'm like, well, archive does some processing. Maybe that'll change the file and it worked. But the I still only don't know why. thing now that I'm thinking about it is the only thing is that last week, weirdly, I recorded the whole thing because I used my this my Heil mic. Yeah. Somebody had said, eh, Sarah was popping her peas on this other mic that mm -hmm. I usually use just for headlines. And the Heil just like, okay, kills I'll use this peas. one. Yeah. Pepping the bees. And uh, so I used this one and I wasn't wearing headphones when I recorded. And mm -hmm. when I played it back, I it was only in one. So I was like, ah, you know, how did I do that? Mm -hmm. Like, did I like, you know, so mm -hmm. 
I kind of did a little funny workaround to make it stereo-ish. Yeah, but that's but then the, but then again, that's, that's just not like, in the encoding though. That was just no. That's just like in Logic itself. Logic yeah. is a mystery. Never use it's it. It's not logical. It's not. That's for sure. But then this week, because I remembered that that happened, I made you know I checked all my settings and I had it right before I recorded. So like I just don't know. Just don't know. No say. No, no say. Well, I am going to have to bid you all adieu now, as are Scott and Sarah and Roger. Have a safe and lovely weights day, as I call it, because it's the day I weigh myself every week. Oh. Really? You're committed, man. <laughs> hey, um, real quick. Uh, I'm afraid to. Should I stop the broadcast or... Actually, you know what? We could totally just talk about this offline. We don't need to talk about it right now. It's cool. All right. <laughs> well, you're going to wonder what it is. We'll tell you Ooh. tomorrow. Maybe. Next Maybe time. we'll forget. We'll probably forget. Goodbye. What?